Eggs in a bag. I just popped down to the local shop and picked up 30 eggs for 92 baht, which is a pretty good deal. It was better than the supermarket price. 30 eggs means we can have scrambled eggs for breakfast. Weirdly, I'm really excited about because in our house, our little electric cooker that we have back in Chiang Rai is not good for cooking eggs. It just doesn't work, the pans are useless. So now we have our gas cooker for a while. Eggs are on the menu. So there you have it, two very excited people about eggs and also fresh bread from our favorite international store that you can only find in Chiang Rai. Pumpernickel light bread, that's what it is. Egg time. That's the food all gobbled up. Today we're going to make a video about the cost of living in Chiang Mai. A basic video overview because it's one of the most popular posts on our blog so we thought we'd make a video version of it. So that's what we're here to do. I'm not sure how many of you would be interested in buying dogs out here but we have actually seen husky puppies for 5,000 baht which is 100 pounds. So cheap but I would say if you do want to buy a dog out here, you can get street dogs that have been rehomed and you can just give a donation. So that's probably the best thing to do because there's a lot of them on the streets. So dogs, these dogs are not for sale. No, these are our dogs. <laughs> okay, so one of the biggest monthly expenses you'll find when you move to Chiang Mai is obviously house rental. With this house that we're in right now, it's 20,000 baht a month and that is for a three bedroom, three bathroom, two story house right in the city centre. It's literally um, less than a minute's walk to the moat road and a second from a nice public park. So it is a very good location if you want to be central and you want to be close to everything and not need transport that much. And it does have a good size garden and outside space, so good for pets as well. When we lived in Chiang Mai, our house rental monthly was a lot cheaper. We paid 7,500 for a three bedroom, two bathroom house with a garden, but it was 25 minute drive south of the city in Hangdong. So if you've got your own car and you're willing to drive in and out of town, then you can find a lot cheaper properties, but they won't necessarily be in directly in the city center. I have to admit, it's very rare to get a house inside the center of town that has a garden this big. We had a house very close to the moat when we first moved here. We rented it for a month and that was only 4,000 baht. But it was a very, very basic house. It was a Thai style, didn't have much protection from insects or bugs, no AC, in a very Thai neighborhood, but also very, very close to the city, to the moat. So it is possible to get cheap properties inside the city center too, but you'd have to lower your standards a lot. Our 7,500 baht house in Hangdong was just right for us. Very Western for a Thai place, but because it was outside of town, it might just be a bit inconvenient for most people. We loved it though. 20,000 baht is a high budget for a house out here. Probably the most unexpected expense that we had no idea was gonna cost so much was the cars. Cars are expensive here. Secondhand car can cost a lot. This old banger of ours <laughs> cost us 70,000 baht just for the car itself. And we've probably spent probably about 50K on it since then getting it repaired. So expect to bring more than you think for a car. Bikes too though. I think bikes are a bit cheaper, although this one, new, you expect to pay about 50,000 for that. There are so many secondhand places to get bikes in Chiang Mai, it's ridiculous. So have a look around. A lot of expats that come here don't buy new. We bought our bike, another old bike, a Kawasaki Victor, for 17,000 baht. So you can get cheap bikes, and that bike is fast. All right, it's time to head out on our walk. First of all, we've got to pay some bills. Electricity bill, water bill. So let's get that sorted out. Also, I have a birthday card to post, so we'll do that too. <laughs> Electricity prices vary quite a bit. This bill we've just picked up from our friend's house was 1,800 baht, which, for a house with two AC units running quite a lot, it's probably about normal. But I don't think we've ever paid any more than a thousand. And we normally pay about 800 or 600, because we don't have AC. Electric bills and water bills are paid at 7-Eleven, believe it or not. So, nice and convenient. Yes, the convenience store. <laughs> That's where we're heading now. We also get our water from here, from one of these machines. It costs about half a baht per litre from one of these machines, which is why we use it. But some people 
get it delivered, which costs about double that or more. You can't drink the tap water here, that's why we buy it. Like some people just boil it in a kettle, drink it straight up, but I don't know, not even the locals really do that. I see locals using the reverse osmosis machines like we do. So do as the locals do, eh? Okay, now to find the post office and then we'll continue the walk. Birthday card sent to England, 24 bar. We don't use much public transport because we have our own car, but if you need to get around by public transport, you're better off using the red song towers rather than the tuk-tuks. So they're about 20 baht to get anywhere inside the city, or 40 baht to get outside. I would say try and avoid taking the tuk-tuks because they're like con men. They try to rip you off all the time. They'll never charge you what a song tower would charge you. When we travel around Bangkok and don't have our own car, we use meter taxis a lot, the yellow and blue meter taxis, because they actually use the meter there, if you ask them. Not many of them around, like there is in Bangkok here. Mm. So That's true. You, you don't barely really see, see them. them. Song towers are the way to go here. Yeah, <laughs> everyone uses song towers. Here's yeah, some prices for you. 97,500 for a Vespa 150. For this thing. 28,500. One of the best things about living in Chiang Mai is the price of coffee. Coffee, cafes and stuff like that. The price difference between here and the West is vast, so we take advantage of that and get coffees whenever we feel like it. So we came to this place quite a lot when we lived in Chiang Mai, but it was never a cafe before. It was just the terracotta art in the garden so it's an um, interesting place to come to and especially for photography great opportunities for pictures in here um, but now there's a new addition of this nice looking cafe so we're going to sit and have a drink now this is nice I'm glad they turned this into a cafe. It was nice before, but now it's even better. We're on the north side of the Chiang Mai moat today. You can see the wall behind me. We made a bit of a mistake and decided to walk around town completely today. We we'll always forget how big Chiang Mai is. I've done lots of water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and my shoe bit. Yeah, another shoe down. <laughs> it's the second shoe you've lost on this trip. I know. Okay, we're almost at the cafe now, so lunchtime. quite quiet out on the roads today. Normally this moat road is really busy but it does get a lot worse uh, on the east side. This is the north side. There's not much up here. But on the east side that's where all the tourists congregate and so that's where all the traffic congregates too. I take back what I said about not being busy. We can't find a spot to cross. some delicious vegetarian food. We're not vegetarians, but the food here is really good. Added bonus, all of the proceeds go to charity. So we've got to begin the long walk back to the house now. Work off all those ginger shoots. <laughs> Surprising how filling ginger can be. It was practically a ginger salad, but it was really good. It Try that place out. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> ginger and like nuts. So that meal cost us 340 baht for both of us. It isn't cheap, um, but it isn't that expensive either. But you obviously can get lunches for a lot less. At this restaurant, the smoothies are huge. It's all fresh, organic ingredients. They don't add anything, which is a big kind of um, bonus. <laughs> bonus. <laughs> it's a big um, bonus. Bonus. <laughs> big bonus to us. Do you find a lot of Thai places will add salt, sugar, syrup and it is good, good healthy food. And it's still less than 10 British pounds for us both to have lunch out and a drink. There are many places around the moat that sell lunches for about 100 baht for two people. You know, 30 baht per yeah. dish, 5 baht per water. Silly cheap prices and street food is like 25, 30 baht. So if you're looking for really cheap food, you can still get that too. We have touched on the subject before, but 
because we don't eat out that much, because we cook at home a lot, when we do go out, we always tend to go to like slightly more expensive places to get food that we can't cook at home. I think all the temples and tourist attractions like that are free. So there's no like entry cost or anything to go into all the major temple attractions in town. So you're not gonna spend any money doing that. We decided to come back home and take a break because it was so hot out there. But now it's dinner time. So we're gonna head off for that. We're going to a place called Mixology. So hopefully the food is good. It looks good on the menu. So we'll let you know how much it costs and everything when we go there. Ready to go? Hey, here's somebody. By the way, I meant to say this earlier before we left, but any girls out there that are wanting to buy clothes and stuff when they come to Thailand, personally, I don't find them any cheaper than in the West. Like to shop in a proper shop in a in a shopping mall, yeah, it's pretty much the same on par with UK prices for me, I find. But there are some cheap shops, there's one particular export shop that we tend to buy most of our little bits from. I got this dress from there, um, it's actually from Zara, but it was 220 bar, which is about £4.50, so that's good. <laughs> so I got this t-shirt for 180 if you care. It's time to go to Mixology, I hope the food is good. It's not far from the house, so we'll be there in a flash. Flash! Ah. Mixology, we have arrived. Before we came to Thailand, we had no idea that places like this were here, so that's why we like to come to places like this, because it's really cool. Some people don't even think Chiang Mai is a proper city, and yet we've got all this kind of stuff in it, which is really cool. We don't drink much alcohol, but you can get cocktails here for 200 baht a glass, or 400 baht for a carafe. So obviously you save money if you get a bigger one. So that's the kind of drink price. You can get a mojito in other places for 120 to 150. Or if you were to go to an expensive sky bar in Bangkok, you look at 500. So prices vary, but in Chiang Mai it's normally between 150 to 200 for a cocktail. That's what we found anyway. We don't drink much. <laughs> We've got a little bench on the window, which we came in here the other day for just for a quick afternoon coffee. And we sat there for about an hour, just watching the world go by. It was really nice. So it's a cool place to sit right on the moat road, so very nice. We have been fed and we have been watered. <laughs> It's the end of the day, so we'll continue with this cost of living tour tomorrow. Good night! Okay, so we just finished the shopping. Like we said before, we cook at home a lot, so we do our weekly shopping in supermarkets like normal people do in the West. So this should give you a general idea of what like a mini shop would look like for us. We normally buy a little bit more than this. All of this cost about 900 baht and should last for about five days of breakfast, lunch and dinners. We mainly buy in the supermarkets fresh fruit and vegetables. We've got pretty much almost a whole watermelon, a whole pumpkin, a bunch of bananas, beetroots, um, apples, a mango, and we've got onions, potatoes, ginger, and then carrots and coconut milks. So we make our own curries at home. And we've also got oats, for Jay's breakfast and a little lint 70% chocolate for our little evening treats. <laughs> also we always buy one of these for Eden, we give her a can of sardines every day so this is actually Eden food. And then chicken. We tend to buy a lot of chicken and pork because it's a lot cheaper out here than it is to get beef but as a general guideline the cost of 400 grams of chicken or about two chicken breasts is about 31 baht which is around one US dollar or 65p for us Brits. So chicken and pork is cheap. Because we're not at our own home at the moment this is a slightly smaller shop than usual. We'd normally spend about 1500 to 2000 baht per week and that would be us eating all our meals at home for our whole weeks. We personally spend about that much but obviously if you've got family you're going to spend more or if you eat a lot of western food, a lot of western products because we don't. Really. You can get a gym membership for a year for about 8,000 to 12,000 a year from what I've seen. But a lot of people just work out in the public parks for free. They've got these machines here that you can use 
They've even got some weights, so it's a possibility. So continuing with our cost of living in Chiang Mai, we have come to Tarpei Gate today, which is kind of the main touristy hub in Chiang Mai. Tarpei is also the area where you'll find your concentration of Starbucks coffees and McDonald's, Burger Kings and all that kind of stuff. So the price of a small cappuccino in Starbucks is 90 baht. So if you want a grande, you're looking at 120 baht for one cappuccino. Normally we would pay about 50 to 60 baht for a cappuccino, so there's your comparison. Yeah, I used to base my price comparison on how much a Big Mac meal costs in McDonald's. But here it costs about 162 baht, which is about three quid. So that's pretty good. I'm not sure what they're doing, but the soldiers seem to like it. They were taking pictures of it. <laughs> Very curious about this. <laughs> Jay's come up with a theory yes. that they're about to jet spray water from the moat into the air. That's what I think. Because they've got this like large launching device which is plugged into the water of the moat. So and it's got a remote control of some sort. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but I don't really fancy being covered with moat water. So we think I'm a new hairstyle by the way. Oh, where are you? <laughs> Today only, today only. <laughs> For one day only, you get to see Jay's new hair trial. <laughs> one of the things I've always loved about Thailand is how people don't really bug you that much. There's not really any beggars on the street or anything trying to ask for money. But here on Tarpei Road and by Tarpei Gate, you do get bugged quite a bit by the tuk tuk drivers and everything. But once you say no, they leave you alone, which in other countries that might not happen. So, yeah, Thailand's pretty good for that. So on our little wander today, we found ourselves at Wararat Market. It's a um, very local market. It's a Chinese market over three levels indoor. So it's quite warm in here. It's, um, it's quite interesting and quite unique. So I thought I'd show you. You do find if you buy stuff in here that um, things like clothes and souvenirs, they won't have prices on. So you will have to haggle if you shop in here. I think the food on the bottom floor does have prices on. For us we don't really do much food shopping in markets anymore. There wasn't much of a difference from the supermarket prices and it's just been much more convenient for us with the car and everything to go to supermarkets than it is to uh, find markets. But we do like to come to them to take photos and wander around and film and stuff because they are different and it's quite a nice way to pass an afternoon. So you would have seen this already in the monthly special but Jay was in here doing a hyperlapse so it's quite interesting to see all the people moving about below. He's just finished, I think. Yeah, okay. The Wararat Market is a good place to come. It's in Chinatown, so it's quite different from anything else you'll find. So if you're looking for something different, head to Chinatown and Wararat Market. It's quite an interesting place. Right, so it's getting pretty dark now, but I'm doing a time lapse for one of the night scenes for our latest video which you've probably already seen Sasha's still editing at home and making us a nice dinner and then we're gonna go to bed and start a new day tomorrow so see you later okay, so that was our cost of living in Chiang Mai video it's actually the longest video I have done to date so I hope that was okay there's actually one thing that we forgot to mention is the cost of fuel and petrol for vehicles so we pay 15 baht per litre for LPG and it's between 28 and 35 baht per litre for normal petrol fuel. So depending on what type of your car takes. So that's that. We actually have two blog posts on the cost of living in Thailand. One that we did in Chiang Mai and one that we did since moving to Chiang Rai. We tracked a monthly spend and documented it all. So if you want to check those out, Links are below, so please do go and have a read if you're interested in that. We really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and we will see you next time. Bye!